So Outlook is actually a pretty decent tool for managing tasks. It's not set up at like that inherently, but it can be configured. So here we have a default task list. Uh, I've gone and added one task, and I've left all the view settings identical to how they started out. Now I usually use Outlook for my work tasks and Todoist for my personal, and I don't really want to mix the two. But I do prefer Todoist, so let's see if we can make them match. To start, I'm going to update my project list. Uh, to do this, it's actually kind of a pain, but you have to select an existing folder and choose New Folder. And for this, I'm just going to do Someday and sort of imitate the default projects that show up under Todoist. Uh, definitely be careful where you create the new folder from. Outlook has a really annoying habit of deleting all folders that you created under that folder. So, for instance, if I were to start using Someday as my, my folder creation mechanism, it would actually, it doesn't show you this, but it would create a hierarchy underneath that. So, if I were to right-click here and choose Delete Folder, it would then go and delete all of the folders that I created with Someday. So, to avoid that, we're going to use Tasks, which we can't actually delete. So. Sticking with that, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of more movies to watch. And another one will just be like server upgrade. So the point of a project is to hold multiple tasks that all relate to each other. So, so while we have projects like Someday and movies to watch, these aren't uh, projects in the traditional sense of, you know, server upgrades or, you know, building a deck or raising children, <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to uh, tasks, and let's see. So to create our context, we're going to start by selecting a task and go to categories. We'll go to all categories, and we'll just do a couple of basic ones. At home, at work, and at HQ. So just a few ideas here, and we'll just stick with those. And of course, I can un We'll do clear all categories on that. I didn't actually want to add them all there, but now they're available to use. So before we go on, let's create a few sample tasks. I'm just going to put um, usual suspects, and we'll set this for uh, January 21st. We're going to start with that. It's movie night. And from here, so to start, we're going to say grab backups, and then we'll. Uh, now, here's a little quick tip. Well, Outlook does not let you reschedule anything in mass without using these. So I can set these all for tomorrow, this week, next week, or no date, or today. Uh, but you cannot then select a specific date, which is really annoying. So here's a little quick tip. We're going to, before we go on and reschedule all these manually, uh, okay, so we're going to alter this view and then we'll save it as a template. And to do this, we're going to say group by and due date. This is a little different from the little flag over there because it's going to group these together based on that. So this comes in pretty handy because now we have a couple of new features. We can drag and drop and that allows us to, that's right, reschedule en masse. So pretty handy, very useful. Uh, Outlook is pretty non-intuitive for not including that to begin with, but you know, I guess in certain views it is available. So the first. Okay, so we've got some tasks lined up. Let's go ahead and see how we can arrange these now in our task list, which is the equivalent of today if you arrange it right. So now we're going to manage our task list. We want this a little differently. We're going to say these are this is our project list and these are our due dates. Okay, so we want to update this view and add group by due date. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is sort. And then by priority, because we want the most important stuff to appear at the top. So I do that from descending. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and show that. Last thing I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I like a little formatting. I, I'm not a robot here, so I want to see priority levels that look different. So. We're going to go here and just follow along. This is pretty tedious, but uh, we're going to go to advanced here and do priority. We're going to say hi, add to list. Okay, so that's our condition. Now we want to change the font. Um, I guess the simplest way would be bold, but that's also used for unread. So what I like to do is to change the color. I'm going to change important stuff to blue. And that's really it. 
The next thing I want to do is change priority low. So we'll add to list, and from there, that's our condition. Now the font, I like to make it less visible. Uh, you know, it's still there, obviously. Uh, silver is a little too light. Let's make that gray. So not quite as visible, sort of ducks out. Priority levels, of course, can't be set in mass, but we can manage. Uh, let's just say very important. So I just added one more little task, and I will say uh, cleanup server room is low priority. So that was actually already on the bottom, but uh, as you can see, I can't really rearrange it like I can the other things because the sort mechanism is saying, nope, you said this was to be sorted by due date and then by priority. So cleanup is a very unimportant task. If I were to switch it to high, important, high importance, it would go to the top and so on. So now I have a little task list and I can right click here and do collapse all. And now this is my today. So you could switch this back to the original view if you prefer the today, tomorrow, next week. And I, I like that, but you don't get drag and drop rearrangement of those tasks. So let's uh, let's just leave it like this for right now. And we'll add a couple other things. So adding context is actually pretty easy. Okay, so uh, some of these are obviously going to be at home. So got that marked. And server upgrade is going to be at work. And we'll just say that Sunday, uh, sign HR documents. I gotta do that today. And we'll say that <clears throat> is high importance and at HQ. So now our task list is rather colorful. This is gonna be at work. We'll say collapse. So we have the next couple of things. Uh, we can just drag and drop that, rearrange it. So now we have two tasks due today. One's important and is highlighted in blue. They're both set up for HQ. Can just arrange this. Now, I have my view set up the, mostly the way I want it. Uh, I can probably tell it to group by, um, by context if you prefer to do that. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. View settings, group by due date, and then by category. So we'll say ascending. Okay, so now we have a bunch of little categories, but it does break it down into the different contexts that we need. And if you have a lot of different locations or maybe several different websites where you can batch tasks together, this would be handy. So like if you had something to do with, you know, um, monster.com and applying for new jobs, this would be how you, you know, you could use context in that case to make sure that everything you did was all done at the same time. So you didn't have to go back, in, oh, I got to sign back in and go back out and so on. But anyway. Let's go ahead and save this view. This is something I like as a new view. We're going to say all task folders. Yep, sounds good. So and with Outlook, you can create something that's pretty close to exactly what you want. Uh, you still get all these default views that are pretty handy. Um, uh, using this for a mobile device is not as convenient. And this is where it kind of falls short of applications like OmniFocus and Todoist. You are not able to uh, view categories with, say, the iPhone Reminders app. You cannot narrow things down by category, and therefore you cannot narrow things down by context. Uh, with that and with these uh, failings, there is still uh, a lot you can do with this application. Hope you all found this useful, and I'd like to thank you for watching.